Welcome back to 60 Minute Minis, where we try to paint a miniature in precisely one hour. And we got a fairly simple miniature to paint today. We have a giant frog. So to make it a bit more complex, we're gonna paint two of them. So we're gonna paint each one slightly different, but to start off with, each started with a primer coat of black which I then dry brushed each with some white to pick out the highlights and then hit them with a very thin base coat of military green. So that's gonna be our undercoat and basically the underlying color for each of our frogs. We're beginning with the smoother non-textured bits because those we're gonna dry brush. Uh, on these sections, we are highlighting with green ochre and uh, using the process of wet blending here, which just means we're adding more and more green ochre towards the center, mainly of the throat sacs. And just uh, as we add more and more, it gets blended in less and less. So we get a nice wet transition between our green ochre and our military green. For what I'm calling our fantasy frog, we're gonna go with a light, slightly brighter shade of green. So we are beginning the dry brushing, uh, starting off with uniform green, which is a very kind of traditional fantasy goblin green color. And then we're gonna add pale yellow to that for the highlights. In case you're asking why we didn't start with the messier dry brushing before doing the wet blending areas, well, don't really have a good answer for you. Uh, when you're painting things fast, you know, some things don't occur to you until later, or maybe I wasn't sure what color I wanted to highlight uh, using the dry brushing at the time, but I knew I wanted the uh, throat sac painted a certain color. So we're just being careful and not hitting those areas with our dry brushing. And each of our dry brushing sections is actually done three times. It's a, we have, in this case, we have the uniform green, then we have pale yellow added, and then here, this is the second coat with more pale yellow added. For our second frog, we're going with more earth tone colors, so uh, more dirty ochre color greens. And beginning with Russian uniform, and you could already tell the difference between that regular uniform green and the Russian uniform, I hope. And then when we get to the second and third dry brush stage, I initially just tried adding beige. However, it was kind of getting too far away from the green tone that I wanted. So I added some pale yellow in, and that actually helped to keep it a bit more in tone to the color I was looking for. And again, I used pale yellow because it was what I had on my palette. So when you're speed painting, using trying to use what you already have on your palette really speed things up. back to our fantasy frog and to spice it up a little bit adding some blue ink wash in the recesses just to add a little bit more color and because it's blue and because it's transparent and because it's going over green it's actually creating this kind of turquoise look on the frog so something we can do very quick and it just adds a, a little bit extra sugar onto the miniature. And then both frogs get a wash. It's a mix of black ink and black green ink. And this wash is mainly going in the recesses, just adding the shade where I need it. It's not an overall wash. And again, you can do a wash before or after a dry brush, depending on what, what look you want. 
uh, doing it after the dry brush is gonna soften the dry brush and bring down the contrast, which in case if you did a really messy dry brush, it might be something, uh, that might be the direction you wanna take. So you can do it either way. For the tongues, which I really hate, it looks stupid on this miniature, but it's there and I couldn't remove it. Anyway, we're starting off with Rose Brown. And then I gave it, I started to give a wash of Cavalry Brown, which uh, mainly try to put that towards the, uh, the back of the mouth. So there was some color transition going on. As we get to the mouth, it becomes a little bit more red. Uh, that worked, but that, that wasn't enough shade for the deeper recesses. So then I applied a, another wash using uh, Burnt Cadmium Red. Final thing to paint are the eyes, and this is where I kind of went over my time limit, sort of. I painted the eyes initially within one hour, however, I didn't like them, and so I went back the next day and I took a couple minutes to redo them. Started off with Vallejo Game Color's Scruffless Brown and then worked our way up to Flat Yellow, and then I just ended up doing a, a stripe of black paint and a little kind of cross in the center, and that's about it. Initially, I tried to do something a bit more complex, and uh, I just didn't like the look. By the way, slightly off topic, but uh, there's a shockingly amount of variety uh, when it comes to frog toad eyes. Uh, they are all, all shapes and sizes, quite interesting, and it actually, I think I got some inspiration for painting future projects, large eyes on dragons and whatnot, so take some time, go look up frog eyes. So there we go, two finished frogs or toads or what have you. To be honest, I don't know the difference between the two. At any rate, I think you can tell which is our fantasy frog and which is our realistic toad. They should, you should be able to spot the difference quite easily, I would hope. So this one was fairly simple. We mostly employed dry brushing and washes and a little bit of wet blending, which is fine for this project because it has a nice textured surface. Even if we weren't speed painting this, it's probably what I would resort to is dry brushing and washes in this case. I did go a little bit over my set time limit. However, I did paint two miniatures, so I'm calling that a win in my book. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll get something a bit more complex next time, I hope. And we'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm a naughty boy! Naughty, 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 naughty! Well...